Good evening, everyone. I'm back again with another of the web series after a long break that we took because of many things going on, exams and so many other things. So finally, we are back again with another of the episode or web series of the Wanna Talk Show. And today I have a very special guest with me. But before I introduce you, uh, introduce her to you. Uh, you all know me. I'm Monalisa Joshi. So I'm the founder and director of Chrysanthemum Chronicles. And let me give a brief intro about her and then I'll invite her over. <clears throat> her name is Rochelle Potka. She's the author of Four Degrees of Separation and Paper Aslam, shortlisted for the Rabindranath Tagore Literary Prize 2020. Her poetry film Skirt was showcased on Shonda Rhymes Shondaland. She's an alumna of IO's International Writing Program and Charles Wallace Riss Writers Fellow, University of Sterling. Her latest book is Bombay Hangovers, which I have been reading from, for some days and I've just finished it. <clears throat> and we'll talk a lot about this book. And I'm just going to invite her. Hi, Rochelle. Welcome to the Vana Talk Show. Thank Lovely you, Monica. Thank you. Thank you for having me over and I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so much. It's really an honor to have you because uh, I've read your bio and I've uh, read a lot about you through internet, Wikipedia and also your book says a lot about you. So I was quite keen to know and have this one to one conversation, though it's virtual, but still nowadays Absolutely. this is the Absolutely. style and pattern. Yes. So, uh, before I start the uh, interview, I would love to know a little about you that uh, you tell, you can tell us, our, sorry, you can tell our audience that what you do and how did your journey start of writing? Yeah, uh, so, so uh, good evening, everybody. And I'm so happy to be here, mostly because uh, I love chatting up with new people. And Mona Lisa Joshi is my latest friend. And it's so lovely to, to speak to her, not only because she's a writer, but because she's helming like a captain of a ship, a literary ship, a publishing house. So I love to see women with guts, okay, because it's very, uh, it's very, um, it's a tough terrain, uh, publishing and distribution and all that. We know it. So I love to see people with, you know, going, going the whole way. So uh, talking about my, uh, my journey, I think my journey is a very little journey. Okay, I say that because uh, uh, when I look at uh, how long and boring life is, and sometimes how long and interesting it is. And when I look at other people's lives, uh, especially the 90 year olds and the 100 year olds, I feel that so So sometimes I feel uh, I feel almost like a drop in the ocean, but a very, uh, a very powerful drop in the powerful ocean. Um, yeah. Like I look at everybody else as well. I, I think we all are very powerful drops, but just one tiny drop, like a drop of elixir. So yes. my little tiny, uh, my tiny drop of journey was that I was working uh, in, in content writing um, uh, for, for a while. Uh, that's when, the, uh, that's when I, uh, I think there was a day or there was a time when I was very frustrated and I didn't know why, because everything was going well, but something mm -hmm. was not going well. And I had to sit with myself, like we sit with ourselves, you know, self-diagnosing. Yeah. We ask ourselves, what's wrong with you? So I asked myself the most important question, what's happening with you? And I realized mm -hmm. that there was only one thing that I loved doing, which was a hobby at that time, which was I used to go every uh, month on certain Sundays to uh, the writer circle of British Council Library. Okay, and there wow. were a few writers. Yeah, there were a few writers and we would sit in a nice circle like a bonfire and we would uh, share our stories and critique mm -hmm. each other's works. That was much of a hobby, okay? And that was not supposed to be my career or profession or anything like that. But that was mm -hmm. the only thing I liked doing. So okay. uh, when this was the answer, I was like, okay, if this is the only small little thing you like doing, you better make it the biggest thing. So this little affair became my marriage, okay? okay. Uh, this hobby became the biggest thing of my life. And I took a detour. So I left my corporate uh, job after speaking to my family and my family said they'll support me. They said it's okay. a small life do what you want to do there's no there's no return there's no regret just do what no. you want to do and so at, at a very uh you know like a very abrupt uh, u-turn i just left my corporate uh career and took to writing and mm -hmm. literature and i didn't know anything because i wasn't a literature uh student or uh mm -hmm. you know from the mfa background or something my background is advertising uh post-grads in advertising and mbas in marketing 
so i just had a very large ocean and i had to cartograph my own blueprint as to where do i go from here so i remember in the first years i would go to every film festival and every book launch in bombay okay i would just go and randomly turn up there and think uh, from here i'm going to find a way out and i didn't find a way out but what i found is a good film or a good book you know okay. and i was still trying to understand how to navigate so it started from that and uh, even today i ask myself how to navigate but the only thing mm. is i have become a better sailor yeah uh, because you just become a better sailor yeah absolutely so that's how uh, you uh, came into writing and then how did it uh, come into uh, come to your mind that you now want you were ready to write a book uh, so i think uh, i think when i started writing a novel in 20 in 2007 when i newly left my corporate Uh, world the novel was very bad okay it was like something that i wrote 17000 words and i realized i don't have something very important which is not the story not the plot not the characters but i didn't have world view okay okay and when you don't and i didn't have a world view because uh, i didn't have to think so much about the mm-hmm. universe because as a corporate person i had to think about corporate objectives my team objectives so i had to yeah. think small i had to think mm-hmm. deep but i didn't have to think wide so i didn't have world view so i realized uh, the novels that the novel that i was working on it didn't have any like i mean it's not about putting things together it's about what do you want to say by putting these things together uh-huh. so that wasn't there so i abandoned the novel thankfully and uh, um, i went in search of world view what do i think of the world yeah uh-huh. and uh, i just went in a very deep search um so mm-hmm. sometimes through poetry sometimes through highbun sometimes through uh, you know screenplays movies watching as well as writing i started developing uh, an idea of what i think about the world okay. okay and it might be sometimes convoluted it might sometimes be in the gray sometimes it might be controversial sometimes it might be on the a very razor's edge of yeah. morality immorality but it's my world view yeah i you know mean. exactly the algorithm of why i thought that or why i think that so i think once i started developing i did a mm-hmm. lot of self learning i think self learning was the key factor in uh, in uh, besides um, gleaning the world through newspapers and world affairs thinking mm-hmm. a lot about politics about uh, sociology philosophy psychology everything everything i mean I, anything that's interesting i grab grab it into my zehen and think about it so it strengthened my world view uh, so uh, but i started slowly with poetry with haibun okay and only okay. now the novels that i'm writing they have what i think you know they are what i think there's a concrete uh, there's a concrete view of the world so mm-hmm. it took time that took time and i think uh, that how that's how it becomes a journey and you, you must have enjoyed it and uh, now that you have written this book this is your recent one bombay hangovers a collection of short stories so let's begin with this book then we will uh, take more questions from your other books and all so your yeah, bombay hangovers is your debut fiction and i noticed that the first story itself is similar to the title of your first collection that you have written called the arithmetic of breasts So, have you improvised the story, or it's just the extended version of that story that you uh, wrote as a book? Is it uh, the first one? Uh, was it a collection of short stories as well, or it was a novel? Yeah. So the that first is- one, uh, yeah, the first one, the arithmetic of breasts and other stories was my self-published book in 2013, uh, when I got this kida of fiction. So I was always a storyteller. Okay, uh, I became a poet by accident. and even a lot of my poetry has story character place in them because it may might have lyricism but it still has character place uh, i never went away from being a storyteller and uh, so that was a self published book uh, arithmetic of breast and besides those uh, i call it seven and a half book seven and a half stories because one was a flash fiction piece okay in that okay so uh, the title the title story uh, um, did very well okay like i got got great reception from everywhere and anywhere okay so it it had the most response from men women everybody and uh, some people uh, some uh, people said oh if the starting is like this the end will be something else so someone said how cheesy is the starting or someone said oh that's too much of breast there or oh, there's too much of this there and that there but i never mm-hmm. didn't have a reaction i had a reaction mm-hmm. okay so 
when I was connect, connecting uh, this book for traditional publishing, Bombay Hangovers, I thought this had to be the first book, uh, the first story. It deserved, it earned its place. Yeah. So this is also, it earned its place. So that was the reason, I guess, I, when I started the story, uh, it immediately told me that brilliant writer I have in my hand and so lucky that I found you because I've been, you know, searching for so long, so many writers and I wasn't enjoying fiction. Finally, Bombay Hangovers gave me that kind of satisfaction. I love so the language and I love the command you have over your characters, everything. So hats off Thank to you. you. <laughs> Very humble. Very humble. Yeah. So let's uh, go to the second question. Uh, I've read a lot about you through Wikipedia also, and uh, I, I really feel so proud and honored today that I'm uh, interviewing such an acclaimed author and poet. So you have won myriad awards and have got uh, great credentials as well as a writer. So what do you enjoy the most? Which medium? Like I've seen you do poetry reading. So well, how do you like it most? Like reading in front of a live audience? or your books getting chosen by unknown readers, anonymous, anybody, and then you get a review. What gives you most uh, the pleasure? So, you know, this is such, a, such an incisive question that only a writer could ask another writer. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it takes one to know one or ask one. But uh, but I think, uh, I, think, I think both in different phases, I like when I have to, you know, I have divided um, this journey into a, the temple and the bazaar. So when I'm in the temple, I'm in the solitude of, uh, you know, etheric ideas, downloading them, developing mm -hmm. them, you know, uh, tatolna, you know, mm -hmm. flipping them and uh, finding their structure, their meaning, their metaphysical uh, fulcrum, everything. When I'm in the bazaar, it's about peddling. It's about saying, hey, you know, buy this book and all that kind of thing. So uh, when I'm in the, in the festivals, uh, it's the bazaar and I, I enjoy that. Uh, but I think generally more than um, being a social person, I'm more an introvert. So I prefer the temple wherein I'm quietly writing. And mm -hmm. then some some reader, uh, uh, you know, an anonymous reader will say will come by and, and say uh, the most simple line and it will sweep me away. It will make my day. Okay. So both things actually, but more the, uh, more the quieter side. Yeah. Okay. So you must have missed uh, these live readings during the lockdown and pandemic period. So how did you cope with it? Because uh, when you start doing it, you enjoy it. So yes. did you miss that kind of... You know, no, in fact, in, in fact, I was the happiest that there was no readings. <laughs> <laughs> that was I was, really like, bad. I was like, okay, I have my cave. And you will not believe this if I tell you now, but it is true that before the pandemic, okay, I thought hey, these next two years, I want to go a little underground, a little okay. reclusive. I want to go mm -hmm. in my cave and uh, read and learn and write a lot more, especially screen plays and, you know, novels. Yeah, and absolutely. then came the pandemic and I was like, okay, this is not good news for the world, but this is exactly what I wanted to do. I was going to have my own lockdown. You just you wanted know, to to your bubble. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this is really like, you know, a universal lockdown and I wanted my lockdown. But it actually went in synchrony to what I wanted. For two years, I wanted to lie low. And uh, mm -hmm. the fact, what happened is everyone lay low. Okay, so I didn't miss anything. I wanted to miss everything. So, uh, yeah, it worked. It worked. So I guess rather you may, must have made a large family through uh, virtual readings and meetings because that was how it was going about. See, sometimes sometimes to cope, uh, I did enjoy the Zooms and all. I really enjoyed because Gar bete bete jannat mil gaya. Okay, now look at us. Look at us. We just have to pretty ourselves and sit in front and kahi jana nahi. no traffic, yeah. nothing. So nothing. the good and the bad is gone. But so I did enjoy that definitely. But uh, I wasn't craving for it because, uh, you know, there is a, a time when you want to just write and there is a time when you want to sell. So hmm. I was in the time of incubation, writing, researching, learning. So uh, that's the lab time. You know, the, so uh, I enjoyed. I enjoyed whatever came to me on live uh, screening but i was happy to not go anywhere <laughs> <laughs> that's that's nice i think you must have uh, got the opportunity to finally you know delve into something that you must have been willing to do for so long and got a, got the time to write or some mull over yeah. okay so let's come to the next question 
you have another book that that seems quite intriguing to me paper asylum and i was exploring through some of the rave reviews on the book i noticed it's a book in haibun so first of all i would love to know what is haibun and how did this thing or this thought come to your mind that you wanted to write a book through complete lenu you know, like through haibun mm -hmm. so uh, i do conduct haiku and haibun workshops so i would almost kidnap you and take you to that workshop okay i do it through <laughs> a uh, true himalayan writing retreat so that those are like you know seven hour workshops and critique and everything okay. but to tell you simply haibun is a uh, is a, a amalgamation or integration of prose and poetry so okay. uh, even the prose is very lyrical it's not story like it's very lyrical and the poetry is the haiku okay, okay. so this is a japanese form and okay. uh, what is most beautiful about this form is that it's very all embracing is that if you're a storyteller and a poet poet mm -hmm. you can just merge merge your telling and expression with with a juxtaposition of both these a little prose a little uh, poetry so it it um, it kind of fits with people who like uh, to like to experiment with forms or they don't want to be stuck with uh, you know just free verse or only short story they want somewhere in the mid middle and one more thing i must say uh, the haibun as a form will make you a different writer just like a screenplay brings out a different storyteller in you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A, a poem brings out a different person in you yeah each form brings out a different form in you okay yeah. so haibun brings out certain ideas on epiphanies that you would have never written in free verse or short story okay. you would only write them in haibun i don't know why i think it is because it's a it's a narrative of an epiphany so uh, you you have an epiphany in the present moment and you weave something about it and you so cannot do that with short story or with novels okay. yeah so did you yeah. learn this this uh, way of writing somewhere or you just you know researched and no, no, no. so actually and... speaking actually speaking there is a subculture of, uh, you know even india uh, in india we have a subculture of in haiku and kalaramesh and a lot of people who are yeah they do constantly, yeah they they are dedicated to writing these japanese forms i happen to uh, stumble into haiku because i wrote a wrong haiku which okay. is three lines three lines yeah. because mostly people who don't know haiku write three lines and they say this is haiku okay. okay so i wrote that i sent it to a competition and then there was a friend who told me you know actually this is not a haiku so i was like what do you mean it's not a haiku it's it's three lines they like three lines doesn't make a haiku two images make a haiku so okay. i was very intrigued by the mathematics of this two okay. images will make three lines i was like aise kaise and then he showed me that with one or two haiku once i realized the beauty of juxtaposing two images and mm -hmm. it become three little lines i was like wow i just love to do this i want to do more of this so through haiku then i learned haibun which is its prose counterpart mm -hmm. and so one once i learned it i was like uh, you know suddenly something a haibun ya opened in me suddenly from somewhere and i was like uh, i i used to sit in hong kong that time my husband was based in hong kong so you know i believe that window views are very important to a writer mm -hmm. what window you see and it has nothing to do with real estate pricing it has to do with your imagination you know yeah. you sit near windows and you dream and dream so in hong kong i was sitting in front of blue sky and blue water in a in a place called kennedy town it was so blue that it looked like i was outside uh, the world okay so okay. I was thinking about epiphanies, and every day I had a new epiphany, and I uh, wove that into Haibun, and eventually okay. Paper Asylum came about. It was all epiphanies. Wow. I wanted to see what it brings out at me, and it bring brought this book out. Yeah, I have to lay, the, lay my hand. Maybe then I will understand better that what actually Haibun is. But I will Absolutely. do a little bit of research because this is something really new to me. I've heard, but I never got the time or energy to, you know, uh, go and check because I was doing so much here in the group. And no, sure. I mean, you are doing a lot. But if you ever uh, think of, you know, wetting your pen in Haibun, you might find you might discover a new writer in you. Yeah, I surely, I surely check. <laughs> So let's move towards the fourth question. Uh, in Bombay Hangovers, let's come to this book. I particularly like the story, the arithmetic of breasts. In the beginning, it all seemed like a fast-paced romance and cheesy kind of uh, words and elements that you have used. But then there's a sudden change to the whole angle of the story. 
so how easy it becomes for you to portray because you have portrayed pain through your character so how easy it becomes for you to portray pain through your characters and you have chosen a sensitive topic that many people still don't want to talk about so what was uh, how did you feel the courage to go ahead with this story yeah so you know uh, i'm so courageous that i don't think about courage okay <laughs> that i could cross, it doesn't cross my mind what crossed my mind is, was only can i be as uh, as a uh, fedelis or faithful to the character i'm thinking about and uh, as you know because you are a writer yourself you know sometimes how ideas come to us or stories come to us in bits yeah. and pieces like mosaic and they join into a puzzle so yeah. for me this story came from many places it came from uh, you know uh, a lot of uh, men in my life and boys in my life who were breast obsessed and mm -hmm. uh, that was one of the men whispering talks that always had maybe i was also irritated with the street harassment that women face why are our bodies always being gazed at uh, consumed mm -hmm. you know yeah. attacked violated uh, so i think there was a there were many things that were there from uh, different threads but there was also this amusement ki a breast is so many things like for a woman it is self esteem because at a, when you're growing every girl is thinking or most girls are thinking you know is it too big is it too little do i need padded bras do i do i not need but you you have a self esteem to do with yeah. that you know that part of your body till you are be at peace with it and mm -hmm. uh, it takes a long to be at peace with those waves okay and um, men i knew how obsessed they were and children need them as nourishment uh, as nourishment yeah. Yeah. so i so i felt that i wanted to claim that anatomy also i didn't want the world to do whatever it wanted to do whether it mm -hmm. molested it or whatever it mutilated it i also mm -hmm. wanted to own it in my small way so mm -hmm. i wanted to have an ode to the breast uh, or you know then anthropologically what it means you know why mm -hmm. once you start walking uh, on twos as a homo sapien you don't uh, you know you need breast because it's an attraction device otherwise mm -hmm. it was just the just the butt just the mm -hmm. butt when the animals were on the fours they only needed the butts okay yeah. to, so this whole evolution it's also evolution and so uh, these things came from many places and uh, i think when i was writing it i was only thinking about the characters munika and narain and thinking if i could get narain right because narain was an average of all the men obsessed with breast ha uh ha -huh. that's what you and, showed in the beginning yeah. yes and and then i wanted to move from lust to deep love because yeah. that's what happens we always engage with a woman or with a i think i think with a woman and with paradise or with the, you know these beautiful places like goa and hawaii you always engage with them at topical superficial levels okay. and once you understand them you go deep okay so the the structure of the story is the same it's mm -hmm. lust to love it yeah. is superficial to depth so yeah. this man is going to fall in love with this woman when he she doesn't have one breast mm hmm it's going to be an antithesis to what was he then thinking what okay. was he doing what are we thinking and that and that was the beautiful uh, end you have given and i yes. love the whole uh, layers that you are slowly removing in it first they are like you know the, he's obsessed and then he falls in love and then that catastrophe comes and then how they cope so everywhere breasts are playing an important role so i i love the way you have gone about it yeah and i think i think in in my own own personal way because i think writing is two things one is uh, you write for creative compulsiveness and then you write for the market or what others will read so hmm. i think mera to padas nikal gaya hi i got my catharsis absolutely love and i loved it i think many uh, many will love and i i would urge all those audience who are watching uh, lay your hand uh, on bombay hangovers it's an amazing book collection of short stories and uh, coming to short stories yes i would love to know that uh, mostly it is seen that when you pitch your manuscript with short stories uh, traditional publishers they are not really you know looking for that kind of genre they are actually interested in either novels or novella maybe so uh, as you have told that you got the traditional publishing deals easily but when you were writing the stories did it ever strike in your mind that will it market well will the short story the whole you know the book proposal will it be accepted so how did you go about it 
yeah so actually speaking uh, i'm glad that uh, uh, you know i came to know that uh, besides me other people also face difficulties because first i thought ye sirf mere sath hota hai ki sare darwaze band hote okay mostly sare darwaze band hote yeah, and yeah. after i finished navel gazing i realized nahi sabke liye darwaze band hai no look, look at me even i have uh, faced that rejection and then you go to self publishing and ultimately i am bringing books yeah. from my own journal my own book yeah so, so, so i yeah so while i was navel gazing i thought ki nahi you know i so only look at my acceptance and and submission right because we are only focused and it's taking all your time then you realize nahi ye sabke sath ho raha actually it's a it's a like a lottery or a gambling den uh-huh, but uh, i i think because i come from poetry and from mm-hmm. high bull which are not popular mm-hmm. forms and they are not selling like okay mm-hmm. so i never had that uh, element in me to think about uh, whether it will get accepted क्योंकि पहले से ही तो कुछ एक्सेप्ट नहीं होता है पोइट्री कहाँ एक्सेप्ट होती है हाई बोल किसी ने सुना भी नहीं दीज थिंग्स ऑन हैपन सो आई थिंक दैट्स अ वेरी ब्यूटीफुल थिंग बिकॉज दैट हर्डल इज नॉट देयर इन माय माइंड सी आई थिंक एज अ राइटर वी शुड हैव द लीस्ट अमाउंट ऑफ शैकल्स इन आर हेड आई थिंक वी गेट अ लॉट ऑफ वी हैव अ लॉट ऑफ हर्डल्स विच पुल अस डाउन so one mm-hmm. by one if you can if we can cut them off we are freer to think and fly like you know uh, kati patangs and i think kati patangs is a very good place to be in it's a fearless place yeah. so be, being a poet and being a haibunio i mm-hmm. already knew ki market mein kuch bikta nahi hai lekin mm-hmm. tumko pata hai ki tum likhti ho so it was always that thing ki write what you want to write nahi bikega to hum dekh lenge dekh lenge okay <laughs> some rasta to nikal aayega i i have that bharosa that something will happen aap yeah. likhte jao you are you uh, for me uh, if you if you know i have to choose between the loyalty of the market and the loyalty of the of an idea i'll choose an idea any day i'll yeah. choose yeah. i'll choose the piece of work i'll choose um, the project i'll choose the uh, i'll choose the the story the characters and if there if the time has not come for this form or this uh, so sort of thing i don't care if it doesn't come i'll keep it in the draw mm-hmm. i have that much of himmat ki i'll keep my uh, stories in the draw let yeah. them be there for the mm-hmm. ants and if the time has come this will go but i will not change uh, form idea for the market the market will have to uh, bow down eventually i'm not bowing down to the market so i had that in my head whether it is uh, akad hai stubbornness hai delusion hai mujhe nahi pata but ye tha so i went with this with poetry i went with this with things so when i read short stories again it was difficult because big publishers didn't want to take uh-huh. you know it always happens with me first i thought it always happens with me but it happens with everybody ki i always am delayed by two or three years with uh, you know luck shining on me it's not easy uh, so yes. uh, the moment i have a wonderful book of uh, collections अब बिग पब्लिशर विल से लेकिन बॉम्बे में क्या नए स्टोरीज हैं सारे स्टोरीज तो हो गए हैं क्या होगा नया बट समथिंग एल्स ओके एंड ये स्टोरी सब नए होंगे इट बी ब्रिलियंट बट मेरा लक ऐसा होगा कि इट बी लाइक क्या नया है इसमें ये तो सब हो गया है सो आई विल ऑलवेज हैव दैट एंड आई एम लाइक ओके आई एम स्टिल गोइंग अहेड तो हो जाता है हो जाता है फाइनली यू कैन एन एज ए पब्लिशर बट आई एम सेइंग more than that i feel now mona lisa that uh, whatever forms we write in whether they are popular like novels uh-huh. or they are not so popular i believe that the conviction of a of a writer or a creator should be intact 100% intact absolutely that's, only, that's how you'll go through your ups and downs because um, the trends will keep changing you know mm-hmm. and mostly they will mostly you will come across the word no no yeah. absolutely so you you yeah. upturn it you you upturn it and you make it on okay yeah i mean if you just uh, if you see it in a very uh, you know long story short if you say that you are not here to fit in you are here to bend the rules absolutely absolutely i am i'm really going i'm i i am planning to do that but i think i'm already doing that so i don't think i will be uh, you know i can stop with any red flag i don't see red flags actually i'm color blind to red for me the red flags also look green okay oh Okay, yes. I did not know that. Oh. Okay. No, I'm not really color blind. I'm saying, but oh. <laughs> I, I said I'm, I'm color blind to the red flag that says. Oh, okay. okay. For okay. me, it's it's a green flag. Oh, okay. 
that's that's really nice kirve you should keep yourself that way motivated and i think everybody who is listening you all guys all of you guys must get this inspiration and keep it inside your head that yeah. stay positive no matter what and stay stubborn okay <laughs> absolutely i think uh, uh, most of the writers that now i am also you know acquainted with so they are always always of this same thought ki you know whatever we have written we will try to place it as it is why we will mold ourselves to right. uske liye you know market ban jayegi market yeah, will be zyada se zyada se zyada i think only writers uh, all of us have to do one thing is to improve our craft lekin mm-hmm. ek bar aapki craft achhi ho then you have nothing yeah. to worry absolutely okay. so i think only the craft is something which every writer has to work on even till and today i work such on a, such a superlative way of expressing and describing you know the characters the language if i if i have to say so i if i if i were the publisher i would have taken it in first <laughs> chance only i didn't meet you earlier na you see <laughs> no worries now we are connected absolutely so let's move ahead towards the next question so um, i have asked you that uh, you have uh, you have explained your journey as a writer but uh, still there are many writers who are like aspiring writers who you know want to know that how they should start the path and you were saying something about this himalayan retreat writing uh, program so uh, can you guide them a little so that you know they also have some guidance or path to begin with their journey right so uh, so i can uh, you know like kind of uh, divide this into two or three ways one is self learning and i think self learning is a lifelong process yeah. uh, also uh, one of the most important things a, a new budding writer should do is concentrate on your craft you should make it a point to to better your craft every single day by mm-hmm. reading something by reading beautiful fic- fiction if you're writing fiction beautiful yeah. poetry if you're yeah. writing poetry in whatever genre so uh, keep improving your uh, need to improve shouldn't end no matter what i till till your last breath you should learn something new in the craft uh, mm. try something different try being experimental don't fear so this mm. is a craft uh, the journey of craft should not end so self learning is something which you can't do away with there are organized programs where you can go uh, to you know creative writing universities and mfa programs in india i think in india mfa programs aren't there but creative writing uh, programs and even internationally there are a lot of those mfa mm-hmm. programs this is organized learning uh, but this mm-hmm. doesn't doesn't take away the self learning that happens every day and other than that i suggest reading reading is something which is so free you know because you don't have to, you don't have to go somewhere you can just read yeah. it in in your lap so uh, on the bed so this reading should always happen and uh, also increase your uh, you know capacities for craft world view observation skills uh, different kind of forms when you try different forms every form improves when i try when i move from poetry to haibun haibun to novel all forms improve actually mm-hmm. so try different things don't worry and don't worry and fear Uh, help other people in the ecosystem because i think we are a community and communities is yeah. what community does okay it's not that your book came out and you uh, you only saw yourself you yeah. celebrate other people's books that is what a community is i think a a book is like a birthday party uh, you go for their birthday parties they come for your birthday parties uh, you can't ignore books and say ki iska iska birth hua hi nahi you know and so that's what i found very common in in the literature yeah. ecosystem that people ignore each other's books as if ye banda ya bandi kabhi thi hi nahi ya tha hi nahi ya wo invisible hai so i find that invisibilizing is very uh, very uh, kind of dark i feel mm. uh, we should acknowledge each other with what we write and we are all on a journey so you can't keep judging you know like uh, that person is better than me or worse than me everyone is on a journey with their, with themselves i feel art is a self uh, self relationship it's mm. not with others it's what you learn in your life uh, himalayan writing retreat i do some poetry workshops so you are welcome i'm doing uh, i'm doing uh, the workshop in uh, i think 9th and 10th june i think 9th is a saturday right or 8th yeah 9th and 10th june uh, just now actually next week so you can uh, enroll at himalayan writing retreat online and uh, this is online but we only have 12 participants only 12 seats but i do this every alternate uh, month at with himalayan writing retreat Uh, and himalayan writing retreat is a is a is a uh, massive uh, umbrella brand for a lot of writers 
and their retreats and uh, you know okay. programs and lots of other programs are also there you can check the website mm -hmm. and uh, other than that um, so yeah i think that's what it is and keep submitting keep submitting uh, keep publishing uh, keep reviewing i feel another thing is there is once you publish you should also uh, try to become reviewers because people think no 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 i can't review i can't review aisa nahi hai i became a reviewer because yes. i felt there was a shortage of reviewers so mm -hmm. but that is how to give back to culture so always give back to uh, the culture of literature in whatever yes. way you can it's a, it's a very holistic journey it's not just one writer reaching the top one Absolutely. writer reaching the top but taking uh, 50 100 along it's it's a cumulative journey i always think i always think of uh, this as a bird song a forest of bird song where every bird is singing their own song and it's as important that's so very the, yeah. that's a very you know uh, amazing thing you have just said and i totally agree with you and i hope that everybody takes this as a you know inspiration and a lesson that it's a holistic journey it's true and we should support each other that's how it did the whole idea of uh, even my publishing house came into life to give platform and give voice to many new writers Wonderful. so it's really good that we are almost like on the same path yes so let's uh, come to the next question okay uh which book uh, as i know that you just said that you have to read a lot let's uh, let me ask you this question as well that which book do you feel that you have read and felt that you could have written <laughs> um well i you know Or there are some, yeah no no there, there's not one particular movie or book but there are some books and movies when i read their log lines you know okay. uh, and i'm like okay you know what i i wish i had this idea but when uh -huh. i read them i'm like are aisa execution mujhe nahi karna tha so it's like not any particular book there are some um, see i read so much that there are some random uh, uh, pieces of gem that come to you like international poetry some gems that suddenly come or like a movie that is like uh, i just just saw recently uh, a movie called tramp tramps on netflix so i was like kitna sweet movie hai yaar i mean maine main aise kyun nahi sochti so but it is it's like every alternate day there's something new that happens and uh, you know like my Cogs and wheels are like churning. Okay. okay. Yeah. But yeah. Sorry. You know, so, like you, 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 you feel that uh, you should have written that, and then you know this idea has already been hatched. So gaya ye to. No, but the but the best trick of an idea is you can just twist it a little yeah. and get a new idea. Absolutely. So uh, you also you just told me that you also do screen plays and you write for them. Uh, uh, so how did this journey start? I mean, how did you get into this? Yeah. So actually, I'm a very I'm quite a new screenplay writer in the sense that I haven't had I I don't have commissioned work and I don't think I want commissioned work at this stage. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing is I'm getting rubaru with the form. Okay. Uh, but I did uh, I do write spec screenplays, which is when we say spec screenplays, it means you you don't write commissioned work. you write whatever you want to write like you have an idea you start developing it and writing it okay. one of the screenplays was an nfdc uh, selection in 2018 it was in the screenwriters lab we oh, we did wow. uh, we did a uh, you know retreat in alibag where uh, an, a, a mentor from new zealand came and she developed the story further with me the storyline didn't change but a lot of depth happened okay. and uh, that also went to win a quarter finalist at the atlanta uh, film Uh, you know screenwriting competition so wow. it it did have its journey of course it has to get produced and all that but then the pandemic came in between it kind of you know mm -hmm. waylaid a lot of uh, things pitching plans and all but i started writing other screenplays but all of my screenplays are are exactly like the way i think about poetry or uh, novels they mm -hmm. are my own organic ideas uh, and mm -hmm. you know i am at that stage where i don't like commissioned work like i don't want someone else's idea in my head huh. i have a lot of ideas which i'm like mujhe pehle wo likhne do let huh. it get out of my head. so i'm in that huh. phase so i'm writing a lot of spec sc screen plays how did that come about is i think in 2018 uh, 2017 i had gone to uh, charles wallis uh, uh, you know writing residency in scotland okay in 2018 when i came back early 2018 i was like uh, bhai thoda saturation lag raha tha like i was like kuch naya karna hai kuch naya chahiye i was very restless i was looking here and there and 
after some festival i got really tired and i was like what's new like you know kya naya kar sakte and i came across uh, i went to whistling woods for 5 days and there was this uh, screen writing uh, workshop and uh, then there was some 6 month course so i had this little idea which i developed there and that's how i just entered it so no planning just random uh, my mm-hmm. nose i follow my nose i follow my restless heart okay. jahan le gaya le gaya yeah that's that's i think and you it has been taking you to good places it i just go you know so now i'm currently obsessed with screen writing and i think i'll be obsessed for very long because there's a lot to learn any art form that teaches me a lot uh, then i stay under that roof for long okay i noticed uh, somewhere you have written uh, in your bio or somewhere i read that you are also a poet for hot star or something you have done so what what was that and uh, how can we find you in hotstar <laughs> no so actually there is there's a you know there's a uh, art uh, outfit called kal art okay it's run by kunal jawar he is okay. uh, a very kind of a maverick um, you okay. know like you only he runs his own you know okay. Uh, what you say organization you could call it mm-hmm. uh, so uh, he used to do a lot of these uh, poetry videos okay that he used to put up on youtube and kunal got in touch with uh, hotstar and they worked out something and then a lot of that content went to hotstar and disney so hamara bhi ho gaya aise like but wow. nothing to do nothing to do with me directly but it did reach a platform and i felt for poetry that is a very big frontier to cross uh-huh. absolutely ott is not like you know you don't get it every day uh-huh. uh, indian english poetry all the more less because uh, mm. this I mean, it's a niche in any case with uh, so much of bhasha poetry and so much of mm-hmm. you know uh, like other other language consumptions so mm-hmm. i felt it was a, a good thing but it didn't it wasn't done by me it was uh, kunal who did it and uh, uh, i think you'll find it under shots if you go to i i have a link i it will be there on my page hotstar will start promoting now but it's under shots english mm-hmm. shots yeah wow. and look for it surely sure, sure. so uh i have uh, one last thing to know though i might ask you a few more questions <laughs> uh, i've noticed that the subject of your stories is real people mostly those whom the society easily shuns away or doesn't want to talk about so how hard was it for you to portray such characters and how much research did you have to do before bringing them to life mm-hmm. so you know i have lived uh, i've lived because we're talking about this book okay bombay hangover was i've lived for long many years in bombay when it was bombay and then it became mumbai and uh, bombay is also the city of my dreams because i come from a satellite uh, smaller town kalyan so bombay was also this 2 hours away wala ek bada dream tha mera okay but now that i live in bombay i'm still searching for bombay and mumbai okay so i realize that sometimes you reach places but you never really reach them they are like a mirage and probably uh, every city is what we think it is but it is not that okay it's a uh-huh. promised land in our heads but it is not really there it's an it's a mirage um yeah. but uh, but um, i have lived long enough to uh, to hang around in every gully and uh, cow gully and corner and art <laughs> district and suburb of bombay uh, i have lived as paying guests in different you know places of um, uh, of uh, oh i think there's some there's some noise okay i thought there was some noise okay like a airplane yeah so i have lived uh, in many uh, places uh, in um, you know bombay and uh, when you meet when you are in these places you meet different people and when you meet different people you uh, you i don't know somehow they get into you you know they get into you. and i also feel that there's something about the uh, senses you know mm. i have held bombay with all my senses whether it is sight i used to feel it a very gray city very uh, full of gray It's gray city. Hmm. Okay, the area you see is gray. The pavements are gray. Sometimes the trees are dusty. Um, okay. Then the smells of the place, the the sight, the sound, everything yeah. went into me. So what you see in yeah. these short stories are what I've exhaled. You know? But that, yeah. I think that yeah. happens with places, right? The places get into But us. But you have Sometimes used a different era. What I've noticed, you have used a different time zone as well. yeah yeah because i think this you know this project monalisa was not planned it was like i wrote some story some time and i wrote another story at, at another time mm-hmm. and then i thought what is common and i put them together as city stories 
so mm -hmm. uh, what you if you if you notice you'll find uh, there will be one dominant element sometimes there's noise or silence sometimes yeah. there's perfume or smell sometimes mm -hmm. there's sight sometimes there's a monsoon and rain story absolutely so there are different <laughs> senses at play but then bombay does that to you na bombay so yeah. belpuri it does that to you and the way you have uh, explained all those uh, smells he is trying to you know identify various things around him i loved it so yeah. okay. i'm soon going to review it yeah. i don't think I, i don't think i could write uh, write uh, uh, with so much of sensoria about any other place because i haven't lived and soaked into it okay. this one okay. bombay i could write because i've lived from goa so you you have some kind of background from goa as well No, yeah, yeah. I'm a Goan. I'm a Goan. So my ancestors and even my grandparents and all lived in Goa. I was a Rochelle Fernandez before becoming a Rochelle Portkar. Uh, so Goa definitely is inside me. But I'm saying I cannot not write that well about Hong Kong or Dubai because I haven't lived long enough. That place hasn't lived long enough in me. Huh. Yeah, yeah. So the Bombay Hangovers is Rochelle Portkar's latest book, book of fiction, and you will love the short stories. get it today from amazon or flipkart and you will love the short stories uh, this book is a true gem i would say and you get the taste of bombay in every true sense from you know like that uh, what's that come what was that place uh, where prostitutions and i just pura kamathura i love that story as well so <laughs> i'm really like super happy i i actually <laughs> found a fiction a good fiction book after a long time I'm glad. I mean, this. What ex? What else would a writer want to hear? Yeah. So, okay. Uh, I would love to know one more thing, Rochelle. That uh, can we expect a novel or something from you in future? Because I think you have tried poetry, short stories. I think now next would be a novel. I'm You're sure. so right, actually. You're so right. I think you're clairvoyant, Mona Lisa. Oh no no. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's just the soul of a writer i guess yeah 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 i think yeah it's so that we keep migrating you know uh, so yeah. definitely a novel i've actually completed my novel mm -hmm. and i'm just waiting to kind of do the finishing touches like you know the final threads and all but yes but what i'm glad to tell you is the novel is not come about because the market wants to publish novels more it mm -hmm. thankfully yeah. came about because organically i was ready to tell a longer tale Okay, and that's what I really like. Yeah, it's come about organically, but yes, definitely there's not just one, but I'm also uh, collecting, um, you know, like resources for the second novel, oh, wow. which will be a long journey. Which will be a long journey. I don't think anything happens very soon. It takes its incubation and all that. But yeah, and definitely. I think that is how how it becomes even more, you know, deeper and beautiful as much you give it the time to brew and you know ferment. Stories yeah. or novels come out in a more brilliant shape because every time I think you go th go there, you have something to add, Absolutely. some extra elements. Yeah, and also also another thing has happened with me, which I think is also part of the journey. Is that initially as a writer, I was very, uh, uh, you know, I suffered from a little bit of impatience. Ki you know, you need to do this fast. Like you need to always be out there doing some event, having a poster. Huh. Bar 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 bar. Now I realize no, actually it's such a long journey. Why the hurry? Huh. Okay, I True. get. I was earlier scared that I will not live. Uh, you know, I will have a shorter life and I will have more ideas. तो फिर मुझे एक दूसरा जन्म लेना पड़ेगा टू फिनिश द रेस्ट ऑफ द आइडियाज नाउ आई एम लाइक नो यू विल हैव अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम एंड लेस आइडियाज यू बेटर गो इन सिंक्रली तो कभी हमें लगता है कि जिंदगी बड़ी हो जाएगी कभी लगता है जिंदगी छोटी और आइडियाज बहुत है सो नाउ आई एम गोइंग स्लो आई एम लाइक लेट्स एंजॉय दिस जर्नी एट अ वेरी स्लो लॉन्ग पेस एंड नॉट वरी अबाउट अ पोस्टर एवरी डे यू नो पोस्टेड एंड नो फोमोज एंड ऑल दोस थिंग्स <laughs> i know yeah. because uh, as you said i also faced you know this kind of uh, this impatient thing in the beginning yeah. then i came across a writer i don't re recall her name right now because it was long back in 2013 or 14 i guess so when i was searching you know like crazily for publishers and all i read somewhere that she mentioned it very clearly that let the manuscript go and then you just relax do gardening do cooking Uh, do whatever you like so i actually you know followed that and then it became a beautiful journey for yeah. myself as yeah. well and then so i 
yeah. so so beautifully so beautifully experienced and i think that's what happens in the beginning we are running because we think oh my god you know like no one knows us and uh, uh-huh. sab humko bhool jayenge and we are not anywhere astitva nahi hai piche reh jayenge yeah and so we are we are doing a lot of things but then i think this is such a long journey no long point journey. hurrying hurrying in the first few instance it's a long journey So, absolutely so yeah. all the audience they are all writers so if you are listening to roshel podcast take this as a beautiful you know inspiration or a mantra that there's no rush just go slow enjoy the journey that's the beautiful thing about it so uh, roshel just uh, tell me that what is your preferred time when do you write and when do you jot your thoughts down and has this ever happened with you like you have the thoughts but you do not have anything in front of you any device so how do you just keep it safe yeah that's such a naughty question mona lisa especially for a writer <laughs> so so uh, no so i think i work according to my biorhythms and uh, as we know that if we are kapti writers and i think we all are kap- we have to be kapti writers because a day cannot be reproduced right one day is gone is gone, gone so the yeah. kapti, kapti writer knows their biorhythms okay so yeah. you know when you can write uh, the most in the least amount of time Huh. and that has to be safeguarded so mine is the mornings i mornings. can write uh, i can write a lot uh, or do a lot of work if not writing hmm. then editing reviewing whatever i can do a lot in that li- little amount of time hmm. and once the day moves on i'm like a flower only by late evening i'm wilted so by late evening i take a lot of time to do such a little such little work <laughs> so i know that i know when i'm working with myself and against myself so i protect my mornings i protect my afternoons my evenings are okay it's good for you know talking and socializing yeah. but not for writing for me mm-hmm. and my night i'm i'm i wilted like a flower so i only submit my submissions always happen in the night because i do them half dead okay, okay. because it's the most boring work yaar submissions wohi same letter yeah. aapko dena hai and uh, you to click it to you go to five places so i do that once i remember i slept on my laptop while submitting okay because Ha huh. it is end of the day but i do it at the wilting hour i submit for 20 okay. minutes every day i used to do that for long 20 minutes wilting hour but i am very particular about my biorhythms mm-hmm. and i also have a totem pole of to do list so now my biorhythm has to match the totem pole of to do list to do list now we make a to do list but i make a totem pole ki what is more important and what mm-hmm. is less important so mm-hmm. the more important is creation the less important is submissions so the creations will always go first most priority in the mornings and the submissions will always go at the tail end and beech mein hoga reading i have my reading hour somewhere in the uh, somewhere in the evening say 4 4 to 5 is a good reading hour just before chai time okay nice so i, I have planned my mind as well as well on the physical plane as well everything planned yeah, right I, I, i have my rhythm so now my i know my rhythm like so it works very well so i feel every writer should find their rhythm and if you mm-hmm. are uh, i want to tell this to the writers who are busy with day jobs and they have other things to do see i am a full time yeah. writer you okay. are full time writing but not everyone is so if mm-hmm. your biorhythm is getting interrupted okay because you have to go to work when you need to write so yes. what you have to do is break your creative uh, uh, creative uh, modules into two you can incubate in the mornings if morning is your time and write in the evening ideation in the morning also is good it anchors you anchors you come mm-hmm. back from your day job and write okay. but don't leave the thinking for the evening or the night mm mm-hmm. no oh. yeah. very nice because uh, many writers i've heard they prefer the night time because they find it quite peaceful you know to write their thoughts down so even for me night works better okay wonderful then then that is what you need to protect yeah so i prefer that when everybody is like gone for their sleep and all the peaceful right. house is calling me to write that's wonderful then that is the time you absolutely protect no yeah don't, yeah don't do anything and don't share that time and don't waste that time yeah absolutely yeah so it was lovely talking to you rochelle and rochelle podkar has four uh, i four i'm right, am i right four books yes. Yes. four books to her credit this one is her fourth and there there's first book arithmetic of breasts and there is paper asylum and third one i'm not able to recall right I now i have to tell you four degrees of separation ah, and i have a, i have a poetry in translation with uh, sanket matre a marathi poet which is okay. a book of 
half marathi poetry and half english poetry cross translated so okay wow so all these books are available through amazon you can just head there and get it but uh, my recommendation would be strongly this get it now and thank you so much rochelle for taking out time and uh, giving me so many you know great motivational talks and also for this will also help me to uh, you know carve my journey as a writer as well lot lot i learned from you today and i'm sure our audience who is watching thank they have you, also thank you, Raiza, thank, thank you for having me and having me over and uh, you see the, the biorhythm is the evening e evening mein main sabse zyada bolti hu so you know you caught me at my right biorhythm in, in the morning i am very restless to to work you know that's that's a long time so, so i'll, I'll yeah. keep this in my so mind this, so that i have to catch you i'll catch you in the in the evening absolutely and this is a perfect gappa goshti uh, that we could have never mind the technology so i i sometimes thank technology that we can still continue beautiful conversations true, thank true. you very much for this and uh, i'm wishing all the all the writers there out the best on your journey and do well and i wish you mona lisa on all your projects thank you thank you so much rochelle and i would be so happy that if you can also be part of some of our other events in future and i would i'm so really honored and delighted to have you today and again i'm urging the audience get this book bombay hangovers available through amazon and share your review because it really inspires and motivates the writer of how they can further carve their art Yes, thank you, Rochelle. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Bye, bye. Bye. So that was a lovely conversation I just had with Rochelle Potker. She is uh, an, an author of four books, and there's also one uh, cross translation, as she just mentioned. So all these books are available through Amazon. So you can just head there and get it, and also review it because I think this that's the best thing you could do. and thank you all the audience for joining us today i would like like to sign off mona lisa joshi founder and director of chrysanthemum chronicles lovely have uh, doing this web series bye all <laughs>